Hello. Um, today, we'd like to share with you some information about SHSC walking alongside an offer and invitation for peer support. Now, before I will invite Pete uh, to tell us a little bit more about it, I would like to acknowledge where walking alongside actually has come from. So myself and Mike Ludlam, we were clinical leadership fellows um, studying with Health Education England and there Susie Sterling, um, the uh, Dean of the Clinical Leadership Fellows, um, introduced us and provided some training on peer-to-peer -peer support. And so walking alongside is very much based on that. So I'd like to hand over to Pete now to give us some more information how that evolved. Thanks. So how that evolved for us was really in, in conversation about kind of reflecting on the situation that we were coming into just at the beginning of the lockdown and the idea that people were going to be potentially quite isolated from each other for, for a length of time, that people's working from home um, might seem uh, very, very long and unpredictable for how the life was uh, was going to go. And that within that de uh, high degree of uncertainty, that it'd be really valuable to be able to put some support, uh, some walking alongside uh, for people to make sure that in the, in the midst of this, uh, we know that we weren't alone, that we were supported. And whilst there's been kind of a mentoring offer within the trust uh, for a number of years now, that uh, we needed to felt we needed to find a way that connected kind of directly where, pe where people were at, the sense of people being peers living through this experience together and particularly wanting to engage with lived experience as part of this. So uh, with um, uh, Simon uh, Wheatley suggested uh, that I catch up with uh, with Mike and Gurkha, uh, which brings us uh, to the, th the three of us. Uh, but then uh, the opportunity to connect out to lived experience staff network group has felt really important that kind of what's it was important for those of us who work within the trust who have lived experience, both as an opportunity to have support uh, for ourselves, but also to have the opportunity from our lived experience to be able to offer support to others. And uh, over the last few months, we've been working on building an offer called Walking Alongside. Uh, together, that um, programme from Health Education England and really grounds it within our reality uh, here at SHSC. Uh, just as we're about to go down potentially into another lockdown period uh, to ensure that support's there. Lovely. Pete, I wonder also, could you um, tell us a little bit more how walking alongside is maybe different to kind of, you know, coaching or mm -hmm. counselling, for example? Mm -hmm. So um, coaching uh, on, on the one side um, might have... Um, a very specific goal that someone's uh, wanting to to work towards. Say, I'd, I'd, in in uh, six months' time, in a year's time, I'd like to be at this place, or I'd like to consider this particular part of my uh, development. Um, whereas often me mentoring, as distinct from coaching, might be more that picture of having someone to to walk alongside. The the aim is not necessarily uh, in view, but the sense of a need for a process to explore something. But then, as distinct as you say, there from counselling. In counselling, there can be perhaps the sense of um, looking back, trying to understand uh, pre previous uh, ex experiences that have affected in our lives and trying to understand how that relates to to, uh, to our present. In some ways, mentoring is, is kind of standing in the same place, but more looking, looking forward. What's kind of my general broad direction of, of travel? What would it mean to have somebody walk alongside me for the moment? The past is going to be relevant, but it's the mentor isn't there to provide kind of counselling, although we, uh, whether whether coaching, mentoring, counselling, there may be similar techniques of uh, and way of being that kind of connects with empathy, that connects with unconditional positive regard. All of these values are, are very similar, but the the, the view looking forward uh, to to the future from where we are now. Also, you know, I wondered so uh, walking alongside um, a really lovely title. Um, with regards to resource, you know, for so people, we encounter different challenges, like you're saying, uh, as a result of the COVID situation and entering possibly a more, you know, kind of um, restricted situation with regards to being able to have social contacts. What within the walking alongside approach, 
where's the belief that the resource sits for challenges that we may be encountering? I think that the resource is about um, recognizing that uh, we're, we're in a time where people have been kind of in, in this situation since fe February, March. That there's there's a lot of exhaustion as as I'm kind of lis listening to people, uh, colleagues, um, whether kind of delivering face to face support in the in the community or colleagues uh, organising at the kind of the background of the organisation, um, a real sense of exhaustion for people, a real sense of of a uh, a need to just just to know that somebody else is is alongside, that we're not on our own in this, that it can feel very mm -hmm. frightening. We don't know how long this is going to go on for. For people uh, providing care on the front line, uh, the the vulnerability of uh, providing that care that we now know better uh, than than we did six months ago, um, mm -hmm. and uh, how just valuable it can be to have someone to listen, someone who's in in an offline uh, position, someone who's not kind of to do with our line line management, not not involved in our in our super supervision, somebody mm -hmm. off offline uh, from the work point of view just to be able to connect those those feelings and those experiences with someone to to walk alongside um the off, offer is for uh, up to six sessions uh mm -hmm. spaced spaced apart probably about once a, once a fortnight just to help people give have an idea of a process someone to check in with and i know from my own mental health recovery journey how valuable mm -hmm. it can be to just to have those that that report in a way that's away from the the work report that we have, mm -hmm. but kind of how 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 am I self caring for myself? Mm -hmm. What am I doing to look after myself? Um, is, can, could you give me any advice or hints or tips for what's been helpful for you? That that's actually a really valuable um, resource. Maybe it doesn't change a lot uh, in terms of uh, the organisation's offer, but is is perhaps something of being alongside as as people, and and uh, I think that's one of the things that feels really important at the moment. Lovely. Would you be able to tell us a little bit what actually a session does look like? Yep. So um, in the beginning of a session, there's the idea that um, you first of all kind of connect with with, with who we are in, in the moment. What's what's kind of been going on uh, for us? Um, we particularly think about um, having as peer mentors, but there's still the idea of a mentor and, and a mentee that, that one person is there to do the bulk of the listening. One person is there to do uh, the bulk of being able to to share uh, their their experience and, and, and to carry that. Uh, but connecting together is, is kind of one of those first important skills that we're, we're human beings, uh, first of all, in in this uh, process. Uh, then kind of the uh, main kind of um, parties kind of looking what does that person the mentee want to want to get out of uh, of the session the sessions are probably up to about an hour um what, what do you want to get get out of this what's the main topic um for, for me what's going on at, at the moment and just kind of some space to to listen to that not necessarily for the mentor to kind of have any answers to bring any kind of uh, oh have you thought about doing that kind of su suggestions but mm. actually just been able to to sit back make space for with the idea that the the person who's the mentee has the capacity up with the the ideas and the understanding and actually kind of creating a safe space for that to happen is often one of the most powerful things that happens within within mentoring i've found and um through that kind of being given space to explore perhaps with a few kind of uh well-timed uh questions that might come in that kind of with from curiosity kind of help the person kind of connect with what's going on uh for them uh to be able to come to a place where the conversation starts looking back out outwards again uh, so where am i going to in the, in the next day where am i going to in the next few few days how how does what we've been sharing here connect going going forward and what am i going to take away that will make a difference uh from that and so some kind of uh gentle roundup of the thing again um not like coaching sorry not like um counseling where you might be given a kind of specific homework to do uh, but just kind of spaced for kind of here's what I'm going to what I want to take away uh, from from this and, and the knowledge that um, in a couple of weeks time there'll be a chance to kind of come back and say say how's it been how it's been. So what I'm hearing very much is so the person who's bringing a challenge or a problem that very much the solutions to these things sits with the person who's bringing mm -hmm. it and so that mm -hmm. the person walking alongside is just the person to really be there 
and support mm. that process. And um, and there are six steps, aren't they? So where kind of that help to lead the person through. And also, of course, there is an agreement at the beginning of each session to agree on a time frame and um, yes, to kind of have that structure agreed. Um, <coughs> apologies. So where are we currently at with it, uh, Pete? So where, where we're at at the moment is um, we've um, got um, uh, you, uh, Mike, uh, Agnes, uh, my, uh, Adam and uh, myself as um, potential uh, mentors uh, in waiting, some already uh, delivering uh, mentoring for, for walking alongside. Uh, able to uh, take on a, f a few people, building kind of slowly at, at first. The, the aim really for it to be an ongoing learning process uh, for us as well as for the people that, that we mentor for us to kind of keep on learning from that that process. Uh, we're um, then uh, really connected within SHSC as, SHSC as part of the kind of offer of, um, of, of the trust alongside uh, coaching as, as a provision uh, there. And as uh, mentors, we're um, commits to uh, taking part in uh, regular uh, supervision as as mentors with uh, pr provision for uh, Simon uh, offering uh, supervision that it's it's peer supervision um, offered to us. So we're taking responsibility for our own uh, development and growth as um, mentors. And uh, there's a sense of a kind of quality assurance being really imp important that as an organization, we want to make sure that the mentoring that we offer is uh, really of the, of the best quality, that we have an accountability uh, to the people that we mentor to ourselves uh, and to the trust. And um, gradually we're building, a aiming that this can be something that can build be built up gradually can 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 scale up uh which means at the moment we won't be able to take on a lot of people but over the over time we believe this is a model that can be um ex expanded and creating more opportunities for people to walk alongside each other and uh we're at the beginning of that at the moment organizationally uh but we feel it's it's a, a relevant offer that that is scalable over time lovely Fantastic. Thank you, Pete. And how can people, if they are interested um, to make use of this offer, what's the best way at this current time? The best way at the moment would be um, we're just working at the moment on putting together a, a web page link through the SHSC homepage. So if you go uh, to the uh, development um, section next to where coaching is offered. Uh, there'll be an offer uh, up there for walking alongside mentoring as part of that, and we'll have some brief information about that, and that will have the email address for how to get into in touch. And uh, then we'll get back to you uh, once you've um, expressed interest. Lovely. Thank you very much, Pete. Is there anything else that you'd like to add here or? Are we going to leave it to say, please do get in touch if you'd <laughs> like to find out more? <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I, th I think it's it's just kind of the, the assurance that it's coming very much from the perspective of, of walking alongside the, the, the uh, having somebody to accompany us in our journeys is going to enable us to get there uh, in a uh, in, in a real way, in a human and grounded way. And that's that's really important for these times where there can, we can be sometimes putting so much pressure on ourselves or experiencing so much pressure within this new and un uncertain time. Just having someone to walk alongside us would be really valuable. And um, as a Caribbean storyteller Grace Holworth uh, says, there are ears that have the power to open mouths. And I think uh, my experience of being part of this team uh, is that uh, we, we, we're people who want to offer that quality of listening uh, to people to uh, enable uh, those who we walk alongside to be able to grow in their journey um, through this difficult time and know that they're supported and walked alongside. Thank you, Pete. <laughs> Thank you.